Just put a number one on, but you take that off and put a BB on. You see. I'm up to for a straight insert ladder today. It doesn't flow very hard here. It's maybe a bit more sensitive than other flow. It's gone for five BB. See how deep it is with how long it's taken that float to settle. Okay, 
that's good enough for now. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay, I'll show you what we've got. We've literally got one mod today. Got an unhooking mat, landing net, phones there, a selection of wagglers, a tackle box, a few bits and pieces in there. Literally bait, all I've got is a couple of slices of bread, loads of worms, a few monkey or maggots starting to turn. Nice Cornish pasty for later. <laughs> A load of sweet corn and what I've done is I mixed the ground bait last night to dampen it I just put some bait in this morning and literally I've got a really good handful of sweet corn a small handful of casters a handful of hemp and a handful of squats and a few a very very few dead reds but I want today Today I want to feed only by the ground bait, um, just to get the fish on the bottom and keep them there really. I think the loose feeding yeah, is bringing some good rudd and roach in, but I want to focus the, all the bites on the bottom so they're not finicky. That's why I've got a bulk 5BB all the way down in the last sort of foot and a half. The two big droppers, I want to get the bait straight to the bottom. Hopefully, hopefully, get a little tinker or two, or anything. But, uh, I'll try the bread first, so don't fish bread very often. So I'm going to kick off with three balls of ground bait, not too big. Judge it and respond to the bites. But I will be feeding just ground bait, small balls. And when I top up, I'm just using it one hand, squeeze it, and have a little nugget like that. Start off with a single grain of corn, like I did the other day. What I'm going to do is bait up, get the float in, get the line where I want to be fishing, some it, and then uh, gives me something to aim at with the ground bait, the float.
basically I'm just going to take an inch or two off the depth just to ever so slight amount It's just been very, very slowly going under, but I think we're just dragging ever so slightly. try a piece of bread flake it's got a piece like that I'm just going to mold, fold it around the hook I'm just going to pinch the bottom on and leave a nice big bit of flake the hook points is showing here I'll squeeze that bit tight and leave the rest nice and flaky
Okay guys, rug number three. I think the ground bait approach is working a lot better. The bites are a lot more uh, positive today. I'll get a straight back. Here you go there. After every fish or two, I'm just feeding a tiny little nugget. I'm sort of like mixing it up. A couple of them, I'm squeezing really hard to get down to the bottom. And then every sort of like third one, I'm just lightly squeezing it just to so it breaks up and creates a nice column of bait trickling down to the bottom. This you've got a 10 foot rod, 3,000 mil, 6 pound maxine on my line, and 4 pound Drennan super specialist hook bait. The size 14 cameras and B520. It's got the bolt shot down, and a number 4, and a number 8 dropper. You can get it out of the bin. Because of the tree above me, I just crouch down a bit. Put a slight bend in the tip, grab the line just above the bolt so you can swing it out. And then just stop it. Nine o'clock. Fish number four, little roach. <laughs> the camera's shy, aren't they? Ouch. Stingies. Off you go. It's just a single red maggot. I'm going for a white maggot. No, no, I'm going to go for a blue one today. Single blue. On the blue bottle. <laughs> I just lost a really good fish. I think it was a tench. It pulled back, went into the weed. I was on the blue maggot, but I just put a red maggot on. <laughs> Sod. I need to organise today. Fish number five, little rope. But the bites are so much more confident today. Got any more blue maggots? I think there's one more blue maggot. 
Let's get that on. Let's get this back in. Ten past Okay, let's add another quick re plum up. Easy. And uh, just taking about an inch off of that. And I can see now there's a few reeds a little bit further out. So I'm flicking it downstream, letting the bulk come round in an arc, just dragging it back to where I want it. Double yellow magic. Let's get this lively fella back. Lovely perch. Right, let's get it back. Straight in. Tiny little dace. Little fella. There's plenty of fish today. Just want something a bit bigger. <laughs> yeah, that's the smallest fish I've ever caught in my life. Tiny little minnow. It is literally, as I was bringing it in, it's a shoal of these and they're all coming in with it. Hundreds of them. Okay guys, it's quarter past ten. It's gone a bit quiet on my initial swim. So I've started up another two lines. One a lot further out and just trotting it through. And I'll show you in a minute. And then I've just started another one real close in, down the side of these uh, stagnant sort of weed and all the rest of it. I'm just letting the float settle beside the weeds. I just put one board ground paint in there, a few bits of corn. Show you where I am. You probably won't be able to see my flow, but it's just literally. Over there, the little red pimple. And then the other line. It's a lot further out, on the edge of the uh, dark shadow. And it's trying it through. keep catching days after days on that line where the shadow is and it runs behind the tree but I keep seeing loads of big bubbles coming up like carp bubbles they're not tench bubbles big patch just to the right I can see my flow it's just underneath the green scum Okay guys, quarter past eleven. Being a bit quiet, so I'm to play around with the float. Put the original float back on. I've locked it off, to sort of like conventional waggler, with two thirds of the weight at the top, and I've just put a big bulk weight at the bottom, just on a lift bite method. And it's just sitting waiting for bites. Beautiful rod. Let's get this pop strip back. I'm going to put another number 8 on there in a minute when I bring it in. That flow just dipped right down. It's going to be a hot day today, 26, misty, the car was all damp this morning, there's a the bite look, it's going, going, don't see the float, just a couple of ripples on it there, I need to get another shot on there, they're really shy.
It's hard like living here. You sort of play with it and mouth it for a little bit and then all of a sudden it just whizzes on the Six or number eight on there. Just dot that right down. Okay, guys, I'm all done. Back at the car. It's just gone 12 o'clock. Only short four hour session today. It's so hot out there now. It's 25, 26. It's not ideal conditions. Bright blue, clear sky. Uh, the water's a lot clearer today. I, can, I was watching the uh, sweet corn go down five, six feet. Yeah, it's really clear. And, but strangely, a lot more pace on it for whatever reason. We've not had any rain, but. It was quite difficult to get that float to stay still where I wanted it. Um, but we still had a few fish. Nice perch there. Some nice rudd again. I was just catching no end of tiny little dace and uh, little gudgeon and bleak and that on the, on the maggot. But um, in the end, I just sat it out with um, a big bit of corn and waited for a bite. But uh, we picked off a few. As I say, nice short session. I'm not sure. I'm not, well, obviously the conditions ain't quite right today and there's a lot of people on the water, backwards and forwards, boats, canoes, paddle boarders and all the rest of it. And bright, clear conditions, clear water. But um, I don't think the ground bait was the, the way forward today. It just didn't feel right. Um, every time I put a ball in, it'd go finicky and quiet for five, ten minutes and then you just say sit and wait for a bite and then float would go under eventually. But maybe loose feeding. Or, you know, what I was thinking is... Maybe there's not a massive head of fish like there used to be years ago. Um, gone are the days where there's thousands of roach and um, this, that and the other. So maybe the sort of pre-baiting the night before was a way forward. Uh, it seemed to work the other day. But what I was thinking is with that peg, uh, the next couple of days I'm going to go back with the rake and rake a bit further out. There's reeds in front of me. And if I can clear a little channel, I'll be able to get to the main river bit, um, which would be ideal for a feeder for bream and bits and pieces like that. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Tight lines. All the best, guys. And I'll see you again in another one. Cheerio, mate.